it's Lizzie from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Today is the promised uh, project using my July craft kit and the best root papers um, and associated bits and pieces. This is the uh, the one I made which uses the abstract impressions and garden impressions designer series paper. The designer series paper is six by six so as you can tell it's a small project so it's perfect for the uh, July craft box. Um, this is the abstract impressions stamp set. It's really cute and really easy to use. Um, so let me just show you what I've got in here. So it's a tiny little box. I say tiny. It's not that small. It's one and a half square by three and a half in length. And then if you open it up, it's got one of those lovely molten brown um, travel size bottles. This is the, mm, they do a number of sizes, but this is 50 millilitres or 1.7 fluid ounces. I am a great fan of molten brown uh, travel, bo uh, travel bottles. They are perfect for obviously going on holiday and the like. Anyway, so that was the one I made with the garden impressions. And the reason I chose this paper is because it kind of goes. So I do like to kind of colour coordinate the contents with the with the box or the box with the contents. So this time I have got the Bashukan body wash. So what was this one? I want to say pink, pink peppercorn. Yes, yeah, so pink pepper pod was this one. Um, this one is Bushukan, B-U-S-H-U-K-A-N, who knows. Anyway, I thought that went reasonably well with pineapple punch and therefore was great with the Best Root Designer Series paper, which you will remember is this lovely set, which is Granite Grey, um, Pineapple Punch, Mam Mango Melody, um, Blueberry Bushel and Whisper White. Um, and I think we've got some black in there. Yes, basic black as well. So the craft kit is linked in my blog post, which is linked immediately below. All the dimensions are immediately below as well. I have had a request that I go through all of the dimensions on my YouTube video. I do try, but I've got a brain like a sieve. So I do rely on the fact that they are on my blog post. So I will try and remember, but I can't promise anything. So we are starting with a piece of blueberry bushel um, cardstock. This is cut at seven by six and a half. I'm not doing in, uh, metric, sorry. I work in Imperial. So for me to do metric, if it's things like this, I f it does my head in. Um, I don't mind doing it for cards because they're easier to convert. But if you do it for metric, I've either got to put stupid measurements or I've got to make a second size. And neither of those goes well with my brain. Um, so I work in Imperial, the scoreboard's in Imperial. So, you know, there we go. Right, so with the seven inch at the top, we are going to score at one and a half. Five, oh yes, one and a half, sorry, my brain. Five and six and a half. And then scoot it round, doesn't really matter whether you put the uh, narrow at the top or the bottom uh, because it's a square box. So we then score again at one and a half, three, four and a half and six inches. And that is our scoring done. So I can get rid of my scoreboard, pop that down. I'm in the middle of doing a reorganization of my craft room. Uh, when I have finished, I may do a new craft, to craft room tour. I know I did one not that long ago, but um, once I've finished, I'm doing it slowly this time. Last time I did a massive clear out, so I'm just burnishing all the score lines, as you can see. Um, last time I did a massive reorganization. And I think because I did it all in one go, it just didn't quite work for me. Um, so I'm having another go. Uh, I am adding some more furniture which as my room is small is interesting because things are going under things and over things. Um, but hopefully this time it will work. Right, okay, so 
let's get rid of can you see oh you can the lighting is kind of weird today it's a funny day it's there's a threat of rain later so I thought I'd film in the morning just in case the threat is a kind of 20% maybe um, so I'm not holding my breath because we actually need some rain so we probably won't get it um, but as a result it's a bit of a sort of cloudy overcast day so I'm going to get rid of these apart from this middle long piece I'm going to get rid of the narrow bits um, and I'm going to cut straight down here uh, because this piece that I'm holding will end up being the lid of the box um, and again I'm going to stri cut straight down here because this is going to be one of the bits of the base of the box that will show so let's do the base first so these two I want straight and these two I'm going to cut in a wee bit not a lot I'm just going to cut away the score line so I'm just going to wedge in on that score line um, so it's a tiny weeny bit and I just end up with that little that little bit um, so again cut straight up here and then cut away the score line. You can cut away more if you want. I just like it neat. Um, it's just that part of me. So again, we're cutting, whoops, no, we're cutting straight up here. So to the left of the score line and then cut away the score line. And then this last piece, we're just going to wedge just very slightly like that. So that's those bits. So as you see, they're just tiny little bits that I'm cutting away. As I say, you can take, you can cut away more if you want, but I just don't. Right. So this is our lid. So again, we're going to keep that. So straight down here, and then this will be one of the little folding bits. Um, so if I grab this, this is going to be one of these, and then we're going to obviously have the other one. So a folding bit, a folding bit, and that bit's coming out. So you can just cut straight across, uh, which is probably the easiest way of making sure you end up with your fold-in bits roughly the same size. Oop. So that's waste. So that went in the bin. It's not terribly straight, but you know what? It's fine. So I'm just going to wedge again just slightly just makes putting the whole thing together a little bit easier and again wedge and wedge and then if I fold that in I can cut straight across this piece and I can use the folded in bit this piece as a guide for my scissors so did you see I the top scissor just runs across um, and you use you effectively you, you move the bottom so well you, you move both of them but you're you're pressing against the top blade um, and it just means you're getting you're more likely to get a straight edge is what I'm trying to say right okay so bit of tear and tape on the edge here and get my straight ruler I'm going to make something that's a bit prettier than this, I think, to do this. But it's a really nice way of getting a straight edge. And then just burnish that down. And yes, I did take a piece of the um, grid paper with me. But there we go. Now, the other thing I want to do before I start anything else is round these corners here. So I've got our tri trio punch. Here's the thing. So there's three punches and they're all beautiful. Uh, you can actually layer up so you can do your corner round and then put this in and then this goes straight across the top if you want to tag. There are, there's a good way of using this and a not so good way of using it. The good way is just to press completely square down. Don't just press on the side you want. It's going to disturb, if I show you underneath, it's going to disturb how things are running. If you press straight down, everything runs square. It's made as one punch. It's not made as three separate punches. If you press on the corner, things don't lie properly. Um, so you're not going to do your punch any favours by doing that. So again, straight in and just hold that in place and punch straight down. Now, I didn't do a brilliant job there, so let's see if I can get that. 
that's a bit better. Whoops. And then throw your punch around. So that's how to use your trio punch better. Now I've got designer series paper pre-cut and I'm using the geo tags um, cause they're pretty. And I've cut these at, they're one and three eighths wide by three and three eighths long. And then this is one and three eighths square. Now, if anyone thinks I've not numbered the backs so that I get these running round properly, I have. Um, and I keep referring to the white craft pen and that's the white craft pen that I use. I did start with pencil, but it was not terribly successful. So now if we sort of hold this together, this is going to be the front. So I like that to be a middle piece. So if that's three, so that this is four, so four, three, two, and one, and it then, oops, the right way up's lovely. And then it means that the pattern actually matches. So sad, isn't it? Right, okay, so you can either use snail or the smallest bit of um, liquid adhesive. I think I'm gonna go for the smallest bit of liquid adhesive option on this occasion. Now I just need a little scrap because I've got a bit of gick, as in dried glue, on my nib. So the the boundary, the border, is tiny. I mean, it is the most teeny, actually, if I do the one over here, it's probably easier for you to see because then you've got a white edge against it. It is the smallest little edge. So we've only cut one eighth of an inch narrower. So all I'm going to do is scribble, and I mean scribble, if my glue would like to run, there we are, scribble, and just make sure you get that bit kind of reasonably with an edge. And as I say, you can use snail if you would rather. It's fine, you can use tear and tape. I do like using liquid adhesive because it gives you that little bit of a wiggle room, which I like a little bit of a margin of error because knowing my ability to get things not 100% right every time, it means that my odds of getting it slightly nearer right increase a little bit by having that margin of error. And as long as you press it down well, that glue is not going to show through. Well, I say that as long as you press it down well and don't use too much. And you can see because we're using a nice dark cardstock, you can hopefully see, and I'll have a look in the camera in a moment to see if you can see. Uh, not quite. So can you see I've hardly used any? And in fact, the, the lines are probably too much. But it does mean that I can line it all up beautifully. Now, I started with a piece of, car, of paper that was cut at three and three eighths and then just sliced it. Um, that way you end up with a, a pattern that follows round, but also you, it means that the one, the three and three eighths, which is the one that people are actually going to notice, is uh, continuous. Uh, the one and three eighth, so the width, um, because it's not um, on the same line, you wouldn't know if it was slightly out, but here you want it to line up because people will see that it doesn't, if you see what I mean. Right, so I've got that coming there. So you then got to decide whether you want your geotags on your top to follow round, which I do, or follow back. I want them to follow round, so I'm gonna go that way. And again, I'm just going to put a little bit of, and I'm not putting really any pressure on the, the glue pot at all. I'm just holding it firmly, I think is probably the way I would describe it. And then, now you may be wondering why I didn't use liquid adhesive for this. You can, um, but for speed of video, I haven't. Um, and the reason I say that is because you do actually need construction to be um, dry. And this is what I would call construction um, before you move on too much. So let's lift that off with my now bent pokey tool piercing tool. I've got to get a new one, but I dropped it on my floor. And as my floor is um, quarry tiles, it's 
not terribly clever. So I've now got a bent piercing tool. Right, so if I fold that, the back piece in, and the front piece over, or the side piece over, that will all line up beautifully. So that's that. That, I'm then going to kind of partly construct that because I want some solid. So this is our front. So this is going to be the last piece we put in. So we can put in our sides and our base. I'm going to put a bit of um, liquid adhesive on the each of the flaps just so that it's a solid uh, a solid construction and it also means that everything holds together nicely on the sides otherwise you can end up with some gaping which is not a pretty look um, and I'm putting it on to what I'm sticking to not what I'm sticking if you see what I mean because we have got a gap and I don't really want adhesive on the inside of my box so the easy way to do that is to stick it on the, what is in effect, the outside of your box. There we go. Now if I pop that lid on and then I can open up my box. And gosh, we're 16 minutes in, but we're nearly done. If I wiggle that in there, that will hold everything together. Pop in my bottle and it's there's a bit of wiggle, but not much. Right, okay, so we need to put something on the front. So I have mounted up from the en route stamp set, which is one of the options you can add in, the You're Pretty Great and this map. So I've got the You're Pretty Great on an H block and the map on a C block. And I've got Blueberry Bushel and Pineapple Punch ink. So I'm going to start with the Pineapple Punch. I just want to... What I want is for that to be long and thin, really. Now, I am going to be cutting some of this away. Um, so I'm not too worried where we go. Sorry, my bracelet's getting slightly in the way. So, yummy. And then, is that going to fit on there? Yes, it is. Mm, yes. It's just whether I turned it upside down. So the you are pretty great or you're pretty great is actually what it says. I'm going to ink up in blueberry bushel. And then just to turn that sideways on because it's going to be easier for me to get it sort of in the middle there. And then just hold that down for a bit. And there we are. You're pretty great. Now, obviously, the inks are going to merge together, but it's fine. We're happy. So, trimmer. If you leave the uh, the pineapple punch to um, to dry longer, then it won't merge quite so much. Um, but obviously, for the sake of speed, actually, let's start by just chopping down there. That's an arbitrary. I'm just cutting it, and all of this is just going to be. I'm just cutting it. So don't expect measurements for this bit, cause you won't get any. Right, so I just want it to be narrower than my box. Now my box front is one and three eighths, which is there. So I just want to make sure that I've got all of that. I'm concentrating on the You're Pretty Great um, stamp. I'm ignoring the map. So I can then come in and because I can see where I'm going to cut, because I'm going to cut in the middle of this gap, like that, and then just trim it down. Now this is going to cover quite a lot of the front of my box. I'm fine with that. You just have to kind of go with what you do. And then that will fit so that it's got a bit of a, a gap round with the paper showing through. So get rid of that. Now the next thing to do is to tie your ribbon round. Ooh, I need to get some more. Right, this I'm only going to tie in a knot because it's I'm, I'm thinking this male rather than female. Um, so I'm just going to leave enough for a knot on the top. This is the um, 1 8 grow grain. Yeah, 1 8 inch grow grain in pineapple punch. 
couldn't re remember whether they put mini or not. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Just tie this in a knot, which of course on camera is almost as interesting as tying a bow. Or indeed not on camera. As I was off the bottom of that, there we go. And then you can adjust it so that it's okay. There we go. Right. So dimensionals. I hope you're impressed. I actually managed to find them. Uh, actually, I might use the mini dimensionals purely because this is quite a narrow label. So the mini dimensionals will be a better bet because um, I want this to trap the ribbon. So while I'm finishing this off, uh, as I say, these are this box is out of my July craft kit, uh, which is twenty pounds. The details are on that's twenty pounds delivered. The details are on my blog, which is linked below, and there'll be details. There'll be a link in the post for this video on on this. On the detail on the blog post for this video, there will be a link to the details of the craft box. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, you have until the 25th of July for the payment to reach me, um, and that's by other bank transfer or PayPal. If you want to pay by check, then that has to be with me by the 23rd of July, um, and that's UK only, and it is £20 delivered. But also remember that we've got the buy three, get your fourth free on designer series paper. And whoops, both of these are included in the designer series paper offer. Uh, there are 10 um, and they're all the £10.25 um, papers. So again, that will be details of that will be in the blog post, which is linked immediately below. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Do remember to subscribe just there. Um, I still know I've got to do my 4,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, that will be coming very soon, I promise you. Um, I just need to sort it out in my brain and my brain is going into meltdown at the moment. Um, if you would like to buy any of these items, I would be really honored if you would shop with me. It's it's people shopping with me that keep me bringing these videos. Um, so that would be awesome if you could do that. Uh, and if you use the host code, then you get to share in the host rewards. Um, and the host code link to me uh, is shown immediately below. And there's a link to my online store. If you go to the second link below, there's a link to my online store. Uh, in that link, it's all my social media links. And one of them is my online store. But obviously over on my blog, you will find links as well. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you again very soon.